workers, then we have workers looking for jobs. But to keep our economy humming along and to stave off inflation, it's important we get more workers into the workforce to fill those open jobs. So Dr. Edwards, let me just ask you, I want to make sure we get this on the record. You're an economist who studies labor markets. Does access to affordable, high-quality care affect labor market participation stayed within our uh, means. Diner Mike Smith says he could use but doesn't really need stimulus money. I think seeing maybe, you know, even like 2000 per month or even more could be, uh, I think, a, a, a good thing for some people. Who but Bernice says, hold that order. You got it. A $2,000 menu item now could lead to a big bill later. So you think you're going to pay for it later? I feel like we are. Yeah. Nothing is free in this world. <laughs> Everybody, huge action is being taken right now by the top lawmakers in Congress. Stimulus payments are coming. Get ready for it. Up to $30,000 in relief can actually be claimed right now. Important details on the new stimulus package have been released. Inflation just continues to cause headaches for many homeowners. And here's what President Biden is saying about this. Since Americans receive multiple stimulus checks and funds during the crisis, homeowners are wondering if Congress will actually help more homeowners furthermore. The 30-year mortgage rate has actually reached a new high last week. It led to a greater stagnation in the housing market. The average rate for a 30-year fixed-rate mortgage increased to 7% for the week, ending October 27. It is actually the first time it reached this threshold since April 2002. As inflation endures, consumers have actually are seeing higher costs at every turn, causing further dramatic declines in consumer confidence this month. In fact, everybody, many potential home buyers are choosing to wait and see where the housing market will end up, pushing demand and home prices further downward. But experts say that there is a current billion of dollars in relief funds that Americans can claim right now. That is through President Biden's Rescue Act, and it's provided up to close to a billion dollars, $10 billion to the states through the Homeowner Assistance Fund. Most states have implemented this system, and actually, most states have implemented programs to distribute the funds and are generally an eligible recipient, must make less than 100% of the median income for the entire country. In the state of Illinois, eligible homeowners will soon be able to receive up to $30,000 in relief through an assistance program administered by the Illinois Housing Department Development Authority. In a press relief, the organization announced that its Illinois Homeowner Assistance Fund would resume at the beginning of the month. They've approved more than $20.5 million in checks for around 1,800 people through the fund. Though the fund has been approved early this year. The program is funded through the American Rescue Plan, and the state was allocated around $400 million. Applicants have to be able to prove a financial hardship as a result of the crisis, and they also must own a home in the state as their primary residence and be at least 30 days late on their monthly payments and have a household income of less than 150% of the area median income. The Biden administration is also seizing on huge earnings and calls from oil companies as it seeks to give voters a response to relatively high gas prices ahead of next week's midterms. Joe Biden has repeatedly sought to place blame on the industry for the high prices. It has ramped up its rhetoric in the wake of massive earnings. However, some analysts say that the large parts of the price are set by the global oil market, not by individual companies. Joe Biden said on Twitter, if these companies were taking advantage of profits and average profits on refining, instead of the profits they're making today, gas price would come down around 50%. And last week, ExxonMobil reported a record $20 billion in quarterly earnings, while Chevron and Shell posted some big numbers too. 11 billion and 9 billion. Since that conflict and other factors drove up oil and gas prices, it has caused a profit bonanza. The Biden administration has called on them to use that income to reinvest in new oil and gas production. In his speech on Monday, Biden threatened a higher tax on their excess profits for these gas companies. Now, he said that higher tax on excess profits and unspecified other restrictions if the companies do not increase production. While the windfall tax wouldn't win enough support to pass the 50 Senate, Biden's comments represent a significant messaging effort to draw attention to high profits. Biden has also blamed the oil industry. ...are going to be hundreds of billions of dollars more. At least I didn't. Too many people that were working, or the working people were making too much money. I thought that was not the best answer to how to get it down. Now, one reason we've seen inflation fall by two-thirds without losing jobs is corporate profits are coming back down to earth. The excesses are being eliminated by the corporations. We have more to do, but inflation is now the lowest point it's been in two years. 
When the Inflation Reduction Act was passed a year ago today. Now they're getting ready to pass it, and the lawmakers in the House are ready to move to vote on a stopgap spending bill, and it'll prevent a government shutdown. But states have been actually talking about tax cutting sprees, and now a proposed Pennsylvania tax break could result in big tax cuts. If the tax breaks happen, this will not be good. It's fueled by surging revenues. States have been slashing taxes for individuals and businesses for the past three years. But tax cuts are expected to come to an end in some states in the fiscal year. Some 25 states have cut individual income tax rates since 2021. And the lawmakers in many states have been approving tax cuts aiming to help residents financially. New property and rent relief rebate checks are going to be sent out, and these payments are worth billions of dollars and will equal hundreds of dollars for many people. It's fueled by surge in revenue. States have been slashing tax for individuals and businesses for the past three years. But tax cuts are expected to come to an end in some states in the fiscal year. Some 25 states have cut individual income tax rates since 2021. It includes 22 states that reduced their top marginal rates. In 2023 alone, at least eight states approved rate reductions. And Arkansas is trimming its top individual income tax rate to 4.7% after reducing it from 5.5%. Aside from individual income tax cuts, states have proposed rebate checks for their residents. Last year, 17 states issued inflation relief payments as well. And now, if you're a Massachusetts resident, income tax refunds were available to you if you paid personal income taxes and filed your return by October 17. If you file your state return by October 17, you should be able to get your stimulus check back. Nearly $100 million in rebates will be sent out to residents across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Starting today, over 4 million older homeowners, renters, and people with disabilities will be issued rebates on rent and property taxes paid in 2022. According to a release, the rebates will be allocated to eligible Pennsylvanians who submitted an application through the property tax and rent rebate program. Applicants who submitted their bank account information on the application forms will receive the rebate through direct deposit. And those who request the paper check to be mailed should expect to receive the payment in the mail too. But after the initial distribution of rebates in early July, rebates will be distributed as claims are received and processed. Recently, a Pennsylvania governor called for a major expansion for the relief program, which provided a lifeline for Pennsylvania renters and homeowners. Under his proposal, the maximum stand rebate would increase from $650 to $1,000, while the income limit for renters and homeowners would be made equal and both increased to $45,000. But these income limits would also be tied to